Hi there, my name is Robert and I'm a conductor. No, not the kind of conductor that drives a train, although that would be a really cool job to have. I'm the kind of conductor that conducts a symphony orchestra. I also happen to love to read and I have found a book that combines my love of reading and my love of music. And so I thought I would share that book with you. It is a book called The Remarkable Farkle McBride and it is by the author, John Lithgow. Let's get started. So, oh, pity the prodigy Farkle McBride, no matter what instrument poor Farkle tried, whether strumming or blowing or drumming or bowing, his musical passions were unsatisfied. There he is, all the instruments looking very unsatisfied. When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckly, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and his family alike by playing superb violin. There he is, up in his bedroom practicing. That's how you get to be a superb violinist, practice. He went, readily deedly deedly dee with all of the strings at his side. Readily deedly deedly dee the remarkable Farkle McBride. Quite remarkable, I'd say. Look at him. A young guy standing there on the box playing with all those adult musicians. That's pretty cool. But when he was four, Farkle played it no more, in spite of his parents' beseeching. He shattered the records he used to adore. He smashed up his rosin, ripped up every score. He threw fiddle and bow to the living room floor, and he shouted, Enough of your screeching! There he is, violin on the floor. Even the dog is mystified. When Farkle was five, his melodic gift once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift, and he rapidly mastered the flute. There he is, playing to the birds. He went rudely tootily tootily too with all of the winds at his side. Rudely tootily tootily too, the remarkable Farkle McBride. He's moved sections. He's not in the string section anymore. Now he's in the woodwind section standing back there. Usually we sit when we play. But at six, Fargo flung his flute into the lake. Notwithstanding its lyrical trill, he stamped on the dock till you'd think it would break. That's it, he exclaimed. I've had all I can take. That tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so wimpy and whiny and shrill. When Farco was seven, a different sound rekindled his musical flame. He became the most expert trombonist around and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He went vroom, petty, doom, petty, doom, petty, doom with all of the brass at his side. Vroom, petty, doom, petty, doom, petty, doom, the remarkable Farco McBride. Here he is, sitting in the back of the trombone section, likely telling a joke or two. That's what the trombonists do sometimes. But at eight, he declared to his parents' despair, and as everyone else might have guessed, I can't stand the trombone with its blat and its blare. That racket is more than my eardrums can bear. So return it or throw it away. I don't care. I despise it, just like all the rest. I cannot believe that the trombone is in the trash can. When Farkle was nine, both his father and mum were bursting with pride and affection. For Farkle learned xylophone, cymbals, and drum, the entire percussionist section. He went boom, bash, clang him a clash, and the clamor that, with all the clamor that he could provide, Tinkly, bing bong, bumpity crash, the remarkable Farkle McBride. Playing the timpani. 
But soon he fell prey to his usual gloom, despite all the praise and the flattery. First a sigh, then a sulk, then a frown, then a fume, then an ear-splitting tantrum that emptied the room. I can't take it, he bellowed the crash and the boom and the clang and the bang of the battery. Okay, here's the problem. Don't put your head between the symbols. That's not how they work. Poor Farkle at ten, howsoever renowned, reached the end of his musical tether. But then he discovered his favorite sound, musicians all playing together. It happened like this. The conductor caught cold on the day of a major recital. You've got to replace him, young Farkle was told. Your cooperation is vital. Conductor with the cold. Farkle standing in the wings, wondering, will I be going on tonight to conduct for the sick conductor? Let's see. So he took the baton and he gave the downbeat. And kaboom, the foundations were shaken by glorious music, bombastic and sweet, that filled up the hall and spilled into the street. Music that brought the whole crowd to its feet from the instruments he had forsaken. They went readily, rudely, voom, petty bang, bravo, all the spectators cried. Deedly, doodly, doom, petty clang, the remarkable Fargo McBride. Quite good form for a conductor, if I do say so myself. Since that sparkling night, Maestro Farco McBride conducts all the instruments he ever tried. His happy heart sings to brass, drums, winds, and strings, and remarkable Farkles at last satisfied. Look at this. It is the entire symphony orchestra. Now here's the deal. I'm going to tell you something. First of all, Farkle's exactly right. Conducting an orchestra is the coolest thing ever. There's all the banging and the sound and the, and the music and the applause. It's very exciting. But he is dead wrong when he says to you that playing the violin or the flute or the trombone or any of the percussion instruments isn't fun. They are so much fun. All of the instruments are fun to play. And so I hope one day that you will choose an instrument and play. And maybe, just maybe, you'll be the person who fills in for me if I catch a cold. <laughs>